I like water right now for some tea and I thought it'd be a good time to talk to you all today about uh, basically what I've been doing for the past three months because I am at home in Las Vegas this is my parents kitchen and um, yeah basically I was working at Google after I graduated from Stanford and then I quit after three months and there's a lot to unpack there so let's go ahead and get into this video Ooh, okay so I'm gonna make some matcha Matcha is on Amazon. I'll put one at the bottom description box if you want one. I tried to film this video like three other times before, but I got so nervous, I basically stopped and like didn't continue with the video. Pretty hot. You know what? I think I want to put some soy milk in this. Or actually almond milk. But, you know. So we got our almond matcha latte. So yeah, where were we? I'm... So I, I quit my job at Google and I have a little bit of a clarification because I was not actually working at Google as a full-time employee. I was working as a contract worker. And for anyone who is familiar with how a lot of tech companies in the Bay Area work, basically like all the major ones, um, they have full-time employees and they have contract workers. And um, I'm not going to really fluff this up or anything, but basically... Um, the division is such that full-time employees get better benefits, are actually salaried, and um, get all the fun perks like really cool offsites to Napa Valley, and um, I don't know the ability to work from a location in Hawaii if there is one. So it's things like that um, that contract workers are not privy to, um, and then contract workers at tech companies are actually usually paid by the hour do more or less the same job but don't get all the benefits or even sometimes health insurance so um, not a great situation yeah this job was like my first one out of school so I'll kind of tell you the story of like why I even took this job so for starters it was um, a recruiting coordination position and um, I had no dreams or desires whatsoever to get into HR when I was in school but <laughs> I needed a job after school and I got this one. As soon as I got the job, I knew it wasn't something I wanted to do. And this is where I'm going to give you all who are currently in school <sighs> some major real talk. Be careful about taking a job that you absolutely know that you don't want to do right after graduation. And the reason why I say this is because that's exactly what happened to me and I quit three months afterwards. But during that moment of graduation, it was around May, I started to kind of panic about what I was going to do with my life after school. I basically spent four years at this institution where I had worked my butt off, but I had developed a routine and suddenly that routine would be gone. I wouldn't be going to classes anymore. I wouldn't be living in the house I lived in with like 60 of my best friends. I just knew that life was going to change pretty drastically. And in that moment, I was like, okay, I need like, the first thing that comes to me. So I took that job. To be honest, it wasn't even that bad. For me, it was bad, but you know, it's the type of job where you go into work, you sit down, and then you probably don't have to talk to anyone for like eight hours straight while you're working. Um, you just send emails and you talk to people who are trying to get hired. I had like really no idea like what it was going to be like before. I am like criticizing the structure of the workplace and the way that it inconvenienced my life at the time. Um, I got a massive kidney infection. I didn't have health insurance. I just kind of want to move on positively and I don't really want to focus on this experience in a way that it makes it negative anymore. Because for a while, I was really just like ruminating over how things had just gone so poorly. But I'm an artist. I'm, I made this piece of art that's on my t-shirt right now. And um, I basically knew that I wanted to pursue art. There are a few things I learned working a job for three months and then quitting. It's not necessarily as easy as I imagined it would have been to just not take the job at all. In the months that I got ready to move to San Francisco and like get on a lease, commit myself to going to work every single day and not really building up my art or like having time for other things, that was all time where um, I basically could have moved back home and start working on my art practice. 
now I'm living in Las Vegas. So after three months, I quit and I wasn't really making any money. I had some money saved up, um, but basically only enough to survive in the Bay Area for two months. I was paying like $1,200 a month. And then even after that, I took a trip to Japan where I subsequently spent a lot more of my money. In my mind's eye, I was kind of like, oh, this is like my summer break that I didn't get. And it was like winter already, like people were like starting their jobs. But I just wanted to be able to have a vacation and then come back home and focus on my artwork. I'm getting tired of standing, like let's sit down. I needed that deep breath after talking about that job. I left San Francisco in December, December 23rd of 2018. And then I decided to take a road trip down from San Francisco to Santa Barbara to Las Vegas. Santa Barbara is like where one of my friends lives. And um, I had like no idea how I was going to like even step into art. Honestly, I'm still trying to figure that out. One really awesome thing that happened was I was talking to one of my friend's coworkers and I told her that I was an artist and she was like, oh, I think I'm considering like hiring an artist or like the magazine is considering hiring an artist. Yeah, and that's kind of how I got my first art gig um, after quitting my job. Did that freelancing gig. It was really helpful because I was like basically like legit broke. I was like okay with that and comfortable with it because I just like needed to restart. Because again, I wasn't going to be paying rent. Um, I just knew that I was going to be moving back home with my parents and living in Las Vegas. When I first decided to move back to Las Vegas, my intention was not to pursue art. My intention was to actually move back to the Bay Area and do one of their coding boot camps in San Francisco because I was like trying to go back to San Francisco. And so, yeah, I, I was just trying to set myself up for success in that regard. But I decided not to study for the coding boot camp for a little bit. I was like actually like studying JavaScript for like the first month that I came home to Las Vegas. And uh, it was it was fun, but I realized that doing the coding bootcamp would have just been another thing that I tried to do in order to convince other people that I was doing the right thing instead of really pursuing the career path that makes me personally happy and satisfied. I've been at home in Las Vegas for three months now and I've fully committed myself to pursuing art. But that doesn't mean that like I'm really opposed to working a job and doing art at the same time. My mindset is not like all art or nothing. I'm, and I know I will make it work in the long run, but to me, because I love it so much, I'm willing to take jobs that support that career and that goal and that dream. I wanted to take a break. And so I came home, I took my break, and now I finally feel like I'm, I'm waking up and I'm like, okay, I had my break and I want to start looking into other stuff to do. I'm making art every single day now. I try to uh, draw or paint for at least five hours if I can. During my time back at home, I've also started assisting an artist who is a full-time career artist. And that's been really helpful because I, I now feel like um, I know how to reach out to mentors and ask them questions of how they've um, been able to create like a pro profitable art business for themselves. It's really exciting to know that I'm actually doing something now that I really enjoy. Today I was thinking that I'm actually finally at a point where I'm happy with the mundane parts of everyday life. Because for a while, I was like constantly in this state where I was like, I need to get to the next thing and I need that next thing to like materialize right now in order for me to be happy. And now that time has passed and there's been a little bit of a lull, um, with the three months that I've been at home, kind of like finding jobs, like trying to figure out my next steps, I feel like a sense of satisfaction. Uh, nothing is ever set in stone or permanent, and I think we have to kind of give ourselves that flexibility and the forgiveness to try things, not like them, and then move on. Um, I try things and quit them all the time. I have tried so many things and quit them all the time. And I know there are people out there who are probably saying, well, what about loyalty? So here's the thing about loyalty. I am only so loyal up until the point where the thing I'm being loyal to is starting to hurt me. And I think some of you guys need to understand that loyalty isn't a one-way street. And if a person or a job isn't reciprocating and 
giving you the benefit that you need, you should walk away because your self-worth needs to be high enough to the point where like you care about your well-being that you're just not going to be like shot on by like anything that like comes by like offering you a supposedly good deal that is actually honestly reducing the quality of your life. That's T. Yeah, and I've given myself the time to like be okay with where I'm at. I've found other people too who are like exactly in the same position and um, who are also in their 20s just trying to figure it out. Life is long and we have all the time in the world to figure out the things that we want and need to do. I am definitely in a privileged position where I was able to quit my job and come home and live with my parents because they have this awesome spacious home in Las Vegas. I always feel that if you have the privilege and the ability to take a break for yourself, that you should. You can't do anything for yourself, you can't help the world if you're just grinding yourself into the dirt and working yourself to the bone basically until you die. I don't mean to be too grim about that, but I think that's something that is oftentimes overlooked in the culture of hustle that we've created for ourselves. And that's the thing, like I'm still hustling these days, but for me hustle, hustle means getting eight hours of sleep. Hustle means making time for the gym most days. It means getting three meals. Um, hustling to me means giving myself the time and space I need to work on things that I actually like because those are the things that inspire me and motivate me and make me appreciate life and show me the direction I want to go. And I think we need to like redefine what we want for ourselves because so often hustle just means like don't sleep, don't drink water and basically like grind until you die. And that's exactly what will happen if you follow that model. So think about what you really want and how you can take care of yourself and how you can take care of those around you, but look out for yourself. That's the only way you can be of any benefit to anyone if you're if you're truly deeply concerned about helping other people. I just wanted to thank you for watching this video. Uh, ultimately, I do feel that like making these videos has been therapeutic for me, has given me um, an outlet to learn so many things, not just through editing, but to also like learn about myself as I focus on recording certain aspects of my life. Yeah, that's that. I think that's about it for this video today, guys. I basically wanted to give you an update on how my life has been over the past few months since graduation. It hasn't even been a year yet since I've graduated, um, but the big point is that I anticipate things to just get better slowly over time, and of course there'll be roadblocks, of course there'll be setbacks, but um, I think there are a lot of people out there who need to see this video of someone who tried a job right after school and decided they didn't like it and tried a bunch of other things. If you haven't subscribed and if you're new here, please subscribe. Give this video a like if you like it. But that's all for today. Bye!